So we're going to take a look in this section, two questions that I'm going to have my big head in a moment, two questions that relate to the industrial revolution short answer questions. Hopefully after listening to this video, you'll be able to be better equipped to be able to answer these, answer these questions. So two questions that will help us, uh, and then I'm going to re-explain something we talked about in class in regards to Marx, in regards to socialism. So what factors gave rise to socialism is the question. What factors gave rise to socialism? So first of all, let's go back to our let's go back to our guided notes here for just a moment and look at you know the re socialism remembers that reaction to capital stock, condemning the evils of industrialism and in, in income inequality, right? That was what drove socialism, capitalism very bad. Capitalism is bad. Um, the, you know, the free markets of profit, unfettered, unregulated capitalism is bad. Um, it, 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 without re, without reforms, later on there would be reforms to address this, but it, it it didn't happen for some for some time in the first part of the industrial revolution. So, the transition to industrialized society was hard on workers. It made their lives difficult, forced them to live in those slums in the tenements. They worked long hours, mind numbing tasks, right? Um, and reformers there believed that the industrial capitalism was heartless and brutal. They wanted a new kind of society. Moderates wanted gradual change. In other words, they wanted reforms of some sort of description. They wanted some sort of reforms um, and, and better benefits. So to end the poverty, there was a radical solution that some people call for socialism. The people as a whole, rather than private individuals, hold the means of production. There's the factories. The, the natural resources, um, the, the again, the factories, the natural resources, the capital, um, the farms, factories, there was the produced and distributed the goods, the, the transportation. Robert Owen was the biggest advocate for this, you know, the way he could change society for better. Sometimes these early socialists were called utopians. They wanted this, this perfect society. Sir Thomas More wrote a book called Utopia, um, that uh, that really described what a, what a society would be like. This uh, new la new Lanark Scotland becomes this model village. So um, and it, but it doesn't. It, it, again, and we'll get to you know the more extreme views here in just a moment. You know that but this is socialism and the factors that gave rise to it. So to summarize, um, what gives rise to socialism. Income inequality, inequality. So you need to put some of these points in your in your short answer question. You need to put some of these points in your short answer question. Income inequality and poor working conditions caused by industrialization and capitalization, right? Capitalism, excuse me. Income inequality and poor working conditions. You know, dr driving home with some of these sort of socialists, people as a whole own and operate the means of production, right? So it, this is how it differs from laissez-faire capitalism. So let's go back to our, you know, our capitalism versus socialism, you know, profits, focus on general good of society, condemning the evils of industrialization, income and inequality, whereas, you know, capitalism was in, into free markets, the, the private ownership that laissez-faire or open market capitalism allowed. Socialists wanted government re regulation, re in socialists um, um, called for governments to regulate production and distribution of goods, right, or the people, governments, or in this case, you could say, um, or the people um, to regulate production and distribution of goods. For laissez for capitalists, leave as little interference as possible. Open free markets. Open free markets to do the to do the work. Free market society. Okay, those are the major differences, and you know the, 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 what gives rise to socialism. Let's get to our friend Mr. Marx. Question two. Question two is, what did Karl Marx mean in this particular quotation? In higher praise of communist society, only then can the narrow horizon of bourgeoisie, remember bourgeoisie is the, is the, 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 the middle class, the, the, the middle and upper class, the, the property owners, the factory owners, the factory managers, right to be fully left behind the society described on its banners from each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. So again, in a in higher phase of communist society, only then can the narrow horizon of the bourgeoisie right be fully left behind. Only then can they be fully left behind. And in society inscribed in its banners from each according to his ability to each according to its needs. 
So let's take a look at what Marx really was talking about here when we talk about that. What was really Marx, what was Marx saying? So let's go back to our friend, Mr. Karl, uh, doctor, the German philosopher. He says, you know, socialism is kind of a ridiculous, uh, utopia is not going to happen. Long forgotten about this guy named Ingalls, who he teams up with, um, whose father owned a textile factory in England. Remember, he's one of the guys we read about as far as describing um, the situation. And these are guys are writing, you know, think about Civil War, the American Civil War. In 1848, he writes the Communist Manifesto, which we'll get into, which you may, which we'll probably get to get into studying a little bit in in a in a different context. So, a form of socialism, which the inevitable struggle between the social classes lead to the creation of a class of society where all the means would be owned by the community. Karl Marx theorized that the economics was the driving force in history. So he argued that there was a history of class struggles between the haves and the have-nots. The haves have always owned the means of production and therefore control society and all as well. He called the haves the bourgeoisie, the, the, the haves that always, the, the haves that, that always controlled the means of production. The have-nots were then the proletariat, so the working class. So according to Marx, um, according to, so again, the haves were the, 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 um, the haves were the, 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 um, the bourgeoisie, the have-nots were the proletariat, this history of class struggles. In the end, he predicted the proletariat's going to be triumphant. They're going to rise up. The workers are going to take control of the means of production instead of a classless communist society. Such a society marked the ends of struggles that people had endured throughout history. He's he's saying that this, this industrial revolution is, is really bringing things to a boil, right? Um, he's, he's saying that this is really bringing things to a boil. And um, and so such a society would mark the end of the struggles. He hated capitalism. He believed it created prosperity for only a few. It really it really didn't. He called for an international struggle to bring about its downfall. Workers from all the countries need to unite. So um, again, things didn't go things didn't co go, go according to plan. Um, so again, workers could could buy more. Um, workers gain the right to vote, remain loyal to their nations by the allied workers of other countries to vote revolution. The only place where this really started to take hold was was in was in, was in Russia, and that was a little in, in in the Soviet Union. It would become the Soviet Union that'd be a little later on. But the modern class struggle pitted the bourgeoisie against the proletariat. The other thing you could think about too, the reason why it wouldn't necessarily take hold, was because you also had this idea of you know these reforms that that we that we learned about that take place. That really do kind of help to squash. As Living Standards starts to get a little better, wages start to get a little better, working hours starts to get a little less. Things start to, you know, they start to squash this idea of of the the um, of Marx, and, and it starts to to take less traction. So let's let's go back and let's summarize then, Mr. Uh, Marx. And again, Marx explains this is quote is Marx explaining how the economics will work after they become communists. Um, explain that a little bit in your short answer question. Explain that a little bit in your short answer question. So ownership of resources will be controlled by everybody and equally shared. Um, people will receive these resources according to their need for them. They'll contribute based on their ability to do so. Not um, and, and So we have a classless society. Um, ownership of resources will be controlled by everybody and equally shared. In this case, um, in this case, government. Um, in this case, a community of people. Um, so after they become communist, and you know, um, with um, with the proletariat, right? The proletariat. Let's go back to let's go back to Marx's ideas here. Um, with the proletariat um, taking over, the proletariat being triumphant. So the proletariat. Let's even look at this a little bit further. The proletariat would, with the proletariat being, would be triumphant. Um, I want to add to this right on the fly. Being triumphant, the workers take control of the means of production and set up this classless, communist society. Right. So. That's the ownership of resources then is controlled by everybody in this communist society and equally shared by among a community of people. Um, so this this is the people receive according. And so this is the quote is saying 
um, people the quote saying, you know, people will receive those resources according to their need for them. These people will receive these resources according to their need for them. They'll contribute based on their ability to do it. So that's the based on their ability to earn money or based on their but what the what the oh, what the bourgeoisie is gonna pay them, their ability to earn to earn money. So this creates a classless society. So again, that's what the that's what the quote is that's what the quote is standing for, and that's what Marx wanted and really never got fully. It's, it came to probably a little bit with the communists in the Soviet Union, but they they kind of, for lack of a better term, they, they didn't do as they didn't fully meet Marx's vision, especially Stalin, the government really controlling too much, and, and almost became they almost became the bourgeoisie. So you might want to stop this at certain points to look at these these bullets to be able to to fully answer these short answer questions according to the rubric.